is the CMB anisotropy really random? For those who may not know, what is anisotropy? Mm -hmm. So anisotropy is not isotropic. Right. That makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and why would we and then not just why isn't it just a uh, a just asotropy? A a right. A I don't know. Mm. Uh, well, anyway, so isotropy is the feature that uh, you have complete uniformity and things look the same and they are the same. The homogeneity, it's oh. similar in, in, in every composition. Direction. In every, every direction, direction that you look. No matter look. which so, way you point the telescope. No matter what. Yeah. So if you're ever flying on an airplane and you're in and the you clouds. You go through a cloud. And you go, go through, through a cloud. Yeah. And that cloud, to you, when you look out the window, it looks perfectly isotropic anywhere you look out the window. And right. if you're in the cockpit, it's the same brightness. It's yeah. the same brightness. It kind of looks like you're inside of a ping pong ball. Everything is the same brightness and intensity. That's isotropic. That's perfect isotropy, the okay. principle of looking the same everywhere. But anisotropy just means fluctuations from that from right. that amount. So it's not that. It's not that. You look so, in one, space, in one space, you'll see something different than you look in the other space. That's right. Now, if the universe were perfectly symmetric at earlier times, the amount of matter was the same everywhere, the amount of dark matter was the same everywhere, any exotic particles, everything was exactly identical, the universe would have no way to know where it should form a cluster of galaxies, yeah. a single galaxy, right. a planet, et cetera, et cetera, right? right? So if you had perfect isotropy, and Isaac Newton realized this 300 plus years ago, perfect isotropy is incompatible with our existence because right. we don't see perfection wherever we look we, we aspire to we it. also know that and that there's clumps of of dark matter because we know that we, right. we know we know exi <laughs> exactly <Yeah. laughs> so it's kind of what's called we are clumps of matter we are clumps of matter <laughs> yeah. ourselves yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, the question's that Yogdash is asking why how, what is that significant of and it's basically related to the fact that we formed in a region where there was an excess of dark matter right where did that excess of dark matter know where to coagulate though that's where inflation comes in because all fields, all quantum fields, have tiny fluctuations in them. They're not, they are not isotropic either. Quantum right. physics enabled this universe. That's exactly. right. We are quantum fluctuation. We yes. are the product of quantum. If inflation's right, we shouldn't presuppose that it is. We're right. looking to see if there if is or is, then. So yeah, so that those pools of dark matter knew where to coagulate because of the fluctuations in the quantum so field. So now these fluctuations, are they disruptions in the field itself yes. that create something pops out of the field and yes. that's the, so the universe itself, is it just one big field? <laughs> According to some, according to some that the that the universe is in a particular instantiation of these conditions of our quantum field in what's called the multiverse. When we were kids, there was just a universe, right? right. Now there's a multiverse, which some say should be more encompassing. Just as we know we're just one star, one planet, there's one many, many billions of galaxies. There could be trillions or an infinite number of universes, but where do they inhabit? They inhabit the multiverse. The multiverse is the collection of all points in four-dimensional space-time and maybe higher space-time that could Will Higher dimensions. ever will mm -hmm. exist. So yeah, so we are a fluctuation in that greater space. You're absolutely mm. right. And then within those fluctuations, it's like waves in the ocean. They're waves upon waves upon waves. And we are the manifestation of this infinite series of wave trains that perhaps dates back to the Big Bang itself. So Chuck, as insulting as it sounds, to accuse someone of being a fluctuation <laughs> is actually quite the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Cosmically speaking. Look at that.